Truth be told, I never bothered with this series until I saw the first two seasons on Netflix before it was taken off, and yeah, if you know me for a long time or even someone who knew my previous channel, you'd know that this series was absolutely something that I loved. Hell, I still have the first three seasons just gathering dust on my shelf. This series was also a treasure trove of possibilities with the world it set up, the concepts, the lore, and so on. I remember people arguing and debating on whether or not Ruby is an anime, or even a number of fan theories going around that I think most, if not all of them, got debunked at this point. And that's not even mentioning the amount of hype the series generated overseas, with official Japanese voice actors dubbing the show, a defunct mobile game in China, an appearance in Blazewood Cross Tech Battle, and now, a full reimagining of Season 1 by Studio Shaft called Ruby Hyosetsu Koku. Yes, I refuse to call by the name RT came up with, it's fucking stupid and I will still stand by that. And now, with the company being shut down by Warner Bros. Discovery, the show in the eyes of what RT was doing has been pretty much concluded. For as much criticism that the series has, a lot of it I can say is done out of a desire to see this show be better than how it turned out, because by all accounts this was a series that so many people like myself enjoy. But next to the writing choices, story, characters, turning out like they did, Vocal factions of closed-minded and terminally online fans that have made people who either attack or criticize this show for being a hater, or even attack people that praise the show for dick writing, and the reputations and decisions of a company that has for a while now been circling the drain until Warner Bros. decided to shut them down. For all of that in account, this series has in later years felt exhausting to be invested in. But yeah, it's no secret that RT is shutting down and filing for bankruptcy. So a question on a lot of people's minds is what will happen to the future of the show, and honestly I don't have a concrete answer to that, just hypotheticals. It's not to say that I think it'll just be dead end of story considering you have people like Dylan Goo Productions, an animation studio that is comprised of people who used to work on Ruby wanting to discuss buying the show, and considering what they've done over the years, I imagine if they got a hold of it that would actually be something to look forward to. And as much as I would love to say that it happened, I know to be skeptical. I imagine outside the IP being dropped, the more likely option is handing it off to companies who have had ties to Ruby before. In this case, Arxis and Studio Shaft. If Arxis gets a hold of it come 2030 or later, we might get a Ruby fighting game. If Studio Shaft gets a hold of the IP, then it might come to open for more anime. Most likely a continuation of what they already did. That, as well as manga series that goes on in its own direction, that'd be interesting to see. RT has made their own games around Ruby, yeah, but pretty much all of them fell off. I think all of them fell off at least. Honestly though, I'll be surprised if a company like Bandai Namco comes along and buys this. Disregarding their DLC practices, Bandai Namco has their hands in a lot of anime and anime related media, such as Dragon Ball games, the Tales of Series, etc. But regardless, pretty much the story is done from here on out. What happens to it afterwards, if it continues or reboots, most likely won't be the same people on board. It will be taken in different directions, and depending on who gets it, we might get a better story. We might get a worse story. Or hell, we might not get everything, and that whole thing might just be me talking out my ass. In conclusion, the porn is better. Judge me all you want. I've seen your tabs. Bye, bitches!